Greetings. Today I'm going to show you a couple of tricks you can use to track down uh, problems in your PsychoPy experiments. And to do that, we're going to be looking at this demo experiment. So in this demo experiment, there's a welcome screen that just has a text object that says welcome to the experiment with a keyboard component where participant press spacebar to proceed. Then there is a loop of study trials where a word is presented to subjects uh, on a white background, a sort of white box. The words that are going to be presented are these six words coming from the words uh, Excel sheet. And you can see that I have that selected in my loop. And then there is a goodbye screen that just says, thanks for participating. And then subjects press spacebar to end the experiment. So let's try running this experiment. And there are going to be errors. And let's see the process that we can go through to try to sort these out. So when I click run, my experiment starts up here. And notice that on each trial, I am not seeing a word. I'm just seeing the white box. So there were supposed to be uh, six words that were appearing on top of uh, those white boxes, but all I was getting on the study trial was the polygon. So in this case, you might be scratching your head saying, hmm, what is going wrong? Because there's a number of things that could be going wrong. And if you're looking at my script, there are some obvious errors. Uh, that you might have caught as I was showing you the experiment. But let's go through this pretending we didn't know what the errors were. So um, in order to try and hunt down the error, I'm going to use um, a custom bit of code here. And in this code, I'm going to use a function called print. Print is a very handy function that allows you to basically output any variable or any information you want into the runner, into the runner's output window. So right down here, we can print anything we want while an experiment is running. So why don't we print the value of word? Because we have a problem. The words are not showing up here. And so the first check I might want to make is that these words are actually getting loaded in. So how about we just do this, print word, because every single uh, time this loop cycles, it's going to be grabbing a word uh, from this column, right? And you can see word was identified as a variable in this Excel sheet. So let's just print the words so that we can see what they are, so that we as the experimenter can uh, see them. So I'm going to run the experiment again, and this time with my code, even though the words aren't showing up on the screen, hopefully um, we see them. Um, in our console. And the experiment finishes. And you can see here in the console, those are the six words. Right? So print has allowed us to take a variable and put it on the screen. And by the way, um, you can write longer strings in here. So you can say, uh, you know, maybe you think just the six words showing up in this console won't be distinctive enough. So you can say, you know, stim, stim word is equal to, and then add on the variable word. And if we run our experiment again, now we will have combined stim word equals and the word that was on the trial, added them together to make one long string, and we'll see the entire phrase printed out. And that completes the experiment, and you now see stim word is equal to. So print is a very handy function that allows you to sort of give yourself output. Um, one thing to note about the print command is if you were to try and print a number, uh, so let's say, let's do it like this. At the beginning of this experiment, let's have current trial is equal to one. Um, then here, why don't we say uh, trial number, and then we're gonna add in uh, the current trial. And then we will put an arrow pointing to the word for that trial. So trial number, cur trial, uh, and then the word. Now, if we try and run this as is, um, what's going to happen 
is we're going to get an error. And I'm just going to show you that error so that if you're trying to use print statements and now the print statements are giving you errors, you uh, understand what the, the issue is. So we're getting this error. Uh, type must be str, not int. What it's basically saying is, hey, current trial is a number, not a string. And you can't just add numbers to strings willy-nilly. Um, but we can fix that by changing current trial to a string. And we can also, at the end of the routine, increment current trial by one. So that every time we go through this loop, current trial goes up. And so we get a list. Trial one, the word was blank. Trial two, the word was blank. Trial three, the word was blank, and so on. So let's run this one more time and see our, we'll call this debug output uh, statements. So the, the print command is very handy for helping you diagnose and debug and figure out what value did variables have behind the scenes, whether or not they were actually showing up uh, on my trials. So you can see trial number one should have been hill, trial number two should have been mountain, trial number three should have been hungry, four should have been green, etc. So the print statement is already helping us sort of track down what word is equal to, um, but we're still not any closer to figuring out why it's not working on our uh, stimulus trial. And we'll get to that, but one more thing I wanted to show you before we get too far is so far every time we run the experiment, we have to kind of wait in the dark for the experiment to finish, and then we can see what the output of all those print statements uh, was. There is a feature in PsychoPy that allows you, in your experimental settings, under the screen section, to turn off full screen mode. This allows you to run your experiment in a window, and you can actually define the size of that window. So let's say 1280 by 720. We could have left it as default, but I don't want the window to be too big. Now if I click run, this time my experiment is not going to run full screen. And one of the benefits of turning this off while you're developing your experiment is now my experiment's running here. I can see the output of my print statements to the left over here. So I can see trial one, trial two. I can see in real time what these trials are supposed to be equal to. Sometimes there's a little bit of lag here and it doesn't fully keep up with the experiment, but it's usually pretty good. And so if I was running my experiment in real time, maybe you had a sophisticated experiment. Sounds are supposed to play on some trials. Some trials are supposed to be lure trials, you know. You have these interesting different conditions on different trials. You could actually have a behind the scenes message coming up on each trial telling you what should appear on a trial, what should the correct answer be, um, anything you want, and that will allow you to assess whether your experiment is actually uh, working correctly. So we're going to leave it in windowed mode for the remainder of today just because it's handy to see the output as it's coming. But let's return to our actual issue here. So we know that the word variable is appearing correctly. Um, so this is actually the word that should be shown. So this suggests to us that we should take a look at what we were actually trying to write in here. And we have our text, uh, this is our text stimuli. We have it to set every repeat. So one common mistake is to leave this as constant because that's the default, but set every repeat mean, means it's gonna grab a variable um, every time the experiment loops. However, notice what I've got here. I have the word word, but I'm missing a dollar sign, right? In PsychoPy, if you wanna actually have a variable here rather than a word, you need a dollar sign. Instead, what's happening is TextStim is trying to write the word word. Um, and we'll get into why it still wasn't showing up in a minute, but let's go ahead and correct this. So now we have dollar sign uh, word. We'll save our experiment and go to run it. And this time we're gonna get a slightly different error. And I'll show you a slightly different way to track down mistakes in your code or issues. So now we try to run our experiment and it crashes. And we say, great, now we didn't even get to the print statements. How are we possibly supposed to diagnose what's wrong here? Well, we could come back here and blindly guess. Um, and I will tell you right now that the issue is that we have a, a capitalized variable name here, and this is all lowercase. So the, what we have to do is change this to capital W. You know, capitalization matters for variable names. So if this is capitalized, this must be as well. 
But how would we have figured that out? Well, let's look over at the uh, the runner and the output error message that we got. So we have an error here, and this is the error. Word is not defined. And even that might not be enough to tip us off to what's going wrong in a complicated experiment. And so when you get errors here, one thing to keep track of is look for the name of your experiment underscore last run. Because this is telling you in the actual Python code that was generated from your builder, there was a line on line, or there was an error on line 255. And you may say, well, how do I even look at that line? Well, look, this is actually a live link. You can click on this and the runner will highlight this line in your code, which should already be open. And if it doesn't pop up, you can just find it as one of your open PsychoPy windows. So here's the error on line 255. Remember, that's what the runner said, error on line 255. So if you're not a coder and you're looking at this and this seems like a lot, um, just know that try and focus on the, the line that is the specific issue that's being shown to you. And the variable names that are exist in this file are the same as what you've named things in your routine here. So notice I have a component called text text stim. Text stim is being set to word, the variable word. Right? That's what that is. And I'm being told that this doesn't exist. So this should clue me into the fact that this is the specific uh, component. Right? Look, the comments here even direct you to the right routine. Prepare to start the routine study trial. If you just read the comments that are in the code, you'll say, okay, I got to look at study trial. Then it says update component parameters for each repeat and text stim is trying to be updated and I'm getting an error. So I know that there's a problem with this variable word. And if I look hard enough at my Excel sheet and my variable, hopefully I notice there's a capitalization problem and I can go ahead and fix that. And now I'm not going to get the error. So print statements and actually reading the raw last run output, the, the Python file that's generated from your PsychoPy experiment can help you hone in on where your problems are in your code and why things are breaking or not working. So we're going to run this one more time just so we can see. And we might think, all right, now it's going to work. And it doesn't quite. We saw a little bit of something there, um, but it wasn't quite working. And here's where the print statements, they weren't coming up in real time there. See what I mean about it can be laggy occasionally, but still it's better to run your experiment in windowed mode when you're developing it if you need to be looking at the output than not. Um, but we know, we know that... Word is being loaded in. We know now that this is reading it without any issue. So, you know, it's not always obvious what the issues might be, but eliminating possibilities is a good way of trying to debug code. So we've eliminated the possibility that we're not loading in the right variable. Our print statements are showing us that we are getting the words. So here we have to think about all the different reasons why this might not be appearing on the screen. Maybe we've given it screen coordinates that are off the screen. That turns out not to be true. Uh, we have 0, 0, which is centered on the screen. Maybe it has to do with the font color. Um, by default, uh, text is written in white, and we have a white polygon here. So we say, oh, that's it. I want to actually be writing my text in black on a white background. Now that'll fix the problem. And we go to run our experiment again, and... We're getting there. There's going to be one more fix we have to do, but as we'll see, our experiment's still not working quite right. So we say, what? What gives? Oh, it almost looked like there was a word there. And it almost looked like it was behind the square. And so this is where you think, okay, well, the print statements are telling me I'm loading the variables. I almost did see a word there. It turns out that the order of these things, of your components, really matters in your routine. This is the order they're drawn on the screen. So if I first draw the text on the screen and then I draw a polygon, well, my polygon is going to cover my text. So instead, what I want is to first draw the white background, then draw the text, and now my 
uh, text is going to appear on the screen. So this time when I run my experiment, um, it'll work uh, just fine. So there we go. There are the words. And you can see mountain was the one that was peeking out outside the box because it was a little too big for the box. Um, and we've successfully diagnosed our problems. So the two main tricks we learned here today are that you can use print statements and they can show you um, any variable you want. You can have multiple print statements uh, that are printing out all sorts of background information. You can look at those print statements after you run an experiment or you can run your experiment in windowed mode while you're developing it. Uh, make sure to turn it back to full screen when you're all done so your subjects get a full screen uh, experience. Uh, so there you go. I've just turned it back to full screen. But you can run things in windowed mode so that you can be seeing that those print statements as your experiment runs so that you can be seeing on each particular trial what should be occurring, what should be appearing, what kind of trial is this. And you can basically send yourself messages from behind the scenes. Um, and the one last trick we saw is pay attention to where errors are occurring in your actual Python script when they occur. And your Python script is very well commented to indicate uh, what routine you might want to look at and even what component within a routine is causing you problems. And then hopefully once you get that close to the error, you can do a little deduction, play around depending on your experiment and find the uh, problem. Anyway, um, I hope these tricks help you in your coding and uh, good luck with your experiments.